Well, I am out at French Prairie Perennials in Dundee with Rick Naylor. And Rick, you have such a wonderful selection of conifers. It really is nice. But, you know, once we get them into our garden, they just need a little bit of maintenance this time of year. Absolutely. There's certain conifers you want to prune this time of year, Judy. Um, your firs and spruce you want to prune in the wintertime, so okay. we're not going to talk about those today. So just be careful to make sure that that uh, if you're going to do those two types of conifers that you do them the right time of the year, which is going to be in the wintertime ah, when so they're not pushing out a lot of new growth. So. Oh, okay. That makes sense. And so yeah. beginning, so let's with tools, you want to have clean tools. So Absolutely. There's two ways to prune uh, conifers, particularly pines. Now, if you're going to prune pines, there's a you can either pinch them with your fingers, mm -hmm. which, for example, on this this uh, Japanese red pine here, we'll want to come through and we can actually just pinch the-, the Oh, the, easy. Yeah, pinch the candles off with our fingers, or we can use our pruners. Now, if we're gonna use our pruners, we want to make sure that we sterilize them first, because we don't want to transfer any diseases onto our, our conifers, which, which is one of the basic ways to do that is through pruning. So oh. use alcohol, sterilize them, wipe them off, wait for them to dry, and then go ahead and use your pruners to, to prune your conifers. So. With pines, now that we're talking about the Japanese red pine, two reasons we want to prune our pines this time of year is we want to regulate the growth so we can keep them a certain size or we want to prune them for shape. Okay. Now on this red pine, it has a basic shape that we want which is kind of a, Mound. a mounded mm -hmm. shape to it. So what I'm going to do here is I want it to get a little bit bigger so I'm going to go through and I'm going to take these candles and I'm going to pinch them off about halfway. Oh, okay. So I'll go through and I'll take all these candles about halfway back, and if I'm using my pruners, I'll just go through and do this, and so it's only which is a faster way to do it. It only will grow that much. It won't come all the way up to this. So Absolutely, the next exactly. Group of needles. Exactly. This will be the start of next year's growth. So ah. we'll just kind of go through, and we'll cut these about halfway back, and that'll be my growth for next year. Oh, perfect. So I can regulate how fast this pine is going to grow. Now, if I want to really regulate its growth. Then I'll go through and I'll just pinch these candles all the way out. All the way out, and it'll keep the same height next year. Right. So we'll go back. Out. We'll go back to these whorls here, and we'll be able to really control how much this is going to grow next year. Okay. So I'll just go through and nip these off, and once we get done, this is what we're going to have left. All right, and and that'll show time. just a little bit, and then it'll get covered up. It. Um, Sorry. Right, exactly. No, it, next year, what will happen is this new growth out and we'll send, we'll send these longer needles out, which is last year's growth, and, and this, this will get up. all covered up. Right. right? Exactly. Well, so, um, and a perfect example of that is Pinostrobus louis here. A softer texture. A softer texture, but you can see how nice and full this is. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't candled this since it was young, it's going to have a very, very irregular growth habit, and you're going to get some of this going on where you don't have a lot of, of needle growth under here. So by candling it, which again, I'll just go through on this one because I don't want to. I, yeah, I want to. I just want to slow its growth to keep that fullness, so I don't want to go all the way back on these. On these, I'll go about halfway, and this one has been candled a little bit this year, so you can see where some of that has been. But we'll go through and we'll we'll pinch these off about halfway back, and then that'll keep the fullness that I want in this plant for next year. Oh, and that which, looks really nice. Yeah, yeah, for a for a pine like this, for an eastern white pine like this. This is a really beautiful shape, um, and this is kind of the way you want them to look in your yard because it's going to have that very full kind of a conical shape to it. Now, Rick, there's other conifers that we might have. So what about a yew? How do we prune that one? Right. This is a golden Japanese spreading yew called Nana Aurescens, and it's a very forgiving plant. So this is a good one to begin with and practice on. So I want to get some basic shape to this. So what I'll do is I'll take these new leaders that are coming up, and I'll go back into the older growth, and I'll find a union where there's a, some branching where the two branches come together. And right above that union is I'll make a cut. Wow, and that's, that's a lot of plant material to take off, but it's okay. It's okay with yews. Yews are very forgiving. So um, you don't have to be too afraid of what you're doing. So again, here I'll go back and I'll take And see, I'm starting to get some basic shape to this plant. But I want to promote, when you prune, you promote growth. So I want to promote some growth this way. So what I'm, because the natural uh, way for this plant to grow is to spread. It's so I want to go through, right. Okay. So, but if I want to get some basic shape, is I'll go back to these unions and I'll cut these off and see how we're starting to get some shape to that. Ah, that looks nice. All right, and then what about this one here? Okay, this is a hinoki cypress called butterball. Hinoki cypress are very tricky to prune. You don't want to use anything on hinoki cypress other than just hand shears because if you get into old wood on hinoki cypress, it won't generate new buds, won't generate new growth. Okay. So you're just going to have a hole or you're going to have a dead spot in the, in the plant. So with butterball here, again, I want to get some uniform shape to it. So this is all new growth here, so I'll just go through Find that union again? Find that union that I'm looking for, which is right here, and I'll just kind of clip that, 
and now I'm getting these lumps out of here and I'm starting to getting some basic shape to it. Now, you're going to have some discoloration a little bit when you do prune because the older growth on the inside is going to be green because it's the newer growth is gold. Sure. Plus, it's getting a lot more light on the outside, which will keep its color. This will color up once it gets gets out into the sunshine and we get some some good uh, some good sun on it. It's so, kind of pretty there with the two-tone. So. Yeah. Well, there you go. But again, we'll want to go back to the find a union and go back and cut this. And now I'm starting to get some shape into it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't go back so far that I got into the old wood where I'm going to lose my... And you'll have dead spots. Right, going to okay. have my dead spots. And and uh, you'll see that with an oaky cypress if you look on the in, deep in the inside where you start to see some of that dead that gets way down on the inside. Oh, of course. Uh -huh. Right, and that's the reason why. So okay. you don't want to... You don't want to cut too far back. And then, Rick, what about this one that has something tall? Would you leave this on? Well, no, I wouldn't because this is supposed to be a prostrate. This is a prostrate deodor cedar called Snow Sprite. Mm -hmm. And this is actually a, a, a weeping Canadian hemlock, which is also supposed to be prostrate. But it has a strong central leader. And the reason I brought this plant over is because I wanted to show that if you have a prostrate plant, they will develop a central leader at some point. And if they do, we just want to go through and we want to cut that central leader out. So I'll go again down to a union down here, right there, right above that union to cut that central leader out. And it'll push and now it. it's, right now it's going to push out growth to the side, which is what we want because we want it to be a, a low growing prostrate plant. Ah, but you know, I think that you've given us so many tips here and really to come out to French Prairie Perennials and talk to you about more information. But I, I think the whole thing we could take away from this is it's really easy. Just have clean tools and go out in your garden and trim them up and, and make them what you want them in your garden. Absolutely. If they have any questions, anybody has any questions, feel free to give me a call. All right. Thanks so much. You bet. Thank you.